sphere block that is 25 kilograms in mass and it is over a, surf a plane surface. Now let's say that there would be an applied force F that would act on the block going to the right. So naturally, this is the direction of your motion. But we know that there is friction that is acting on the surface of our contact. So that would be either be static frictional force or kinetic frictional force. Say so we have our static friction coefficient as 0 0.3 and the kinetic frictional coefficient equal to 0 0.2. Take note that the coefficient of static friction is always greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction because it is always harder to start a motion than to continue with your motion. So for this one, how do you compute for the frictional force of an object in contact with the surface that would be equal to frictional force equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force acting on the surface of contact. So for the normal force, that would be the force that is acting opposite the weight of your object. So this is your normal force. Taking the normal force, you would compute for the summation that the force is vertical that is equal to zero because there is no movement at the vertical axis of our figure. So this would be positive forces going up and going down should be considered as negative. You can interchange this but this would be what I would use. So positive force is the normal force minus the weight of the object and that should be equal to zero. There are no other forces that is acting on the vertical axis of our plane. So this would be normal force equal to the weight of the object. And the weight is equal to the mass times the gravitational force that is acting on the object. The mass is given to be 20 kilograms. And our gravitational force is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared. So our normal force that is equal to the weight of the object is equal to 20 times 9.81. This would be 196.2. The unit would be in newtons. Kilogram times meter per second squared is equal to newtons. Now let's compute for the static friction that is acting on the system. This would be equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. This is 0 0.3 times 196.2 and that would be 58.86 equal to 58.86 newtons for the kinetic frictional force this is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force 0 0.2 times 196.2 and that would be equal to 39.24 newtons so from here if you are going to ask what would be the force, what force F, the applied force, would cause the block to move? So what force F would cause motion for this system? So let's try to make a table 
this will be the applied force F, the static frictional force, and the kinetic frictional force, should be K. And we have the summation forces horizontal. If the summation force is horizontal, that is going with the direction of our force is has a value, then there is motion. We will consider forces going to the right, considering the direction of motion to be positive, and forces going to the left to be negative. Now what if there is no force that would be applied? What would be our frictional force and kinetic frictional force? Now take note that this is the maximum value of our frictional static force. This can be written as less than or equal to. So our frictional force can either be 0 up to 58.86 newtons. That is the maximum value of our static friction. So if there is no force applied, there would also be no reaction that would be retarding the motion of the block that is due to the force but because there is no applied force so the summation of our forces horizontal would also be zero what if you are going to apply a force that is equal to 10 newtons what would be acting the frictional in the frictional static force that would also be equal to 10 it satisfies the equation the frictional force static static frictional force should be less than or equal to 58.86 that is also equal to and 10 satisfies that parameter so the kinetic frictional force for this one is zero because the static frictional force and kinetic frictional force cannot occur at the same instance. Or we can say that the frictional static force and all the kinetic frictional force should occur at a given instance. If there is a frictional static force, then there should be zero kinetic force. If there is kinetic frictional force, then your static frictional force should be zero. So for this one, still the summation of the forces horizontal would be equal to 10 minus 10 is zero. There is still no motion that will occur because the applied force F still has not uh, exceeded the value of your frictional static force. What if you applied a value of force that is, that is equal to the maximum value of our frictional force, let's say 58.86? What would be our frictional static force? That would still be 58.86. And there is still no kinetic frictional force because there is still no motion. You are just putting it in equilibrium. So this would be equal to zero. But what if you, let's say you applied a force F equal to 60, newt 60 newtons. This time, you have overcame or exceeded the value of your static frictional force. So this would now be equal to zero. And there is now motion. And the uh, frictional force that is acting on the surface of contact is now your kinetic friction equal to 39.24 Newton. If you take the summation of forces on the horizontal part, that would be 60 minus 39.24 that would be equal to 20.76 newtons so we can say that the force that would cause the block to move should be greater than 
86. Any force that would exceed this value would cause the system or the object to move in the direction you are considering. We have here a problem. Would the block move if the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0.3? We have a figure, a block that is over an inclined plane, inclined at 30 degrees, and weighing 10 newtons. So for this one, we know that the frictional force is equal to coefficient of friction times the normal force. For this figure, we have defined N or the normal force to be equal to the force that is acting perpendicular to the surface of your contact surface. This is the surface contact. So, the normal force should be opposite the direction of the force that is acting on this surface. So what is the force that is acting on the surface? That is the component of the wave perpendicular to that surface. Let's say, let's name this axis as x prime and this as your axis y prime. So let's call this weight y prime component and this one is our x prime component of our weight. If this is 30 degrees, this would also be equal to 30 degrees. So the value y prime is equal to 10 cosine of 30 degrees. Where did I get this equation that came from cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent the value y prime over hypotenuse 10 newtons. Cos multiply, you will arrive with this equation. So for our the value x prime, that is equal to 10 sine of 30 degrees. Solve this 10 cosine of 30 is equal to 5 square root of 3 newtons and 10 sine of 30 degrees is 5 newtons so for the normal force that should be opposite the force wy prime so this is our normal force taking the summation of forces on the y prime axis that should be equal to zero because there is no displacement along this axis being considered. So forces going in that direction should be positive and it's considered this to be negative. So the normal force is positive, negative, the value y prime should be equal to zero. And equal to transpose this to the other side this would be equal to 5 square root of 3 newtons so we can now solve for the frictional force static frictional force because we are considering static coefficient but how are we going to know when, what is the direction of this static frictional force we will determine it using this x prime component of our weight if that is the force component that is acting on this direction so if there is motion let's say this is the direction of our motion let us assume if this is the direction of motion and that weight is acting along the direction or going to the direction of motion then the frictional static force should be acting opposite that direction. So this is our frictional static force. It would always oppose the direction of our motion because it is retard friction is defined as the retarding force that is preventing motion. So 
summation of forces at the x prime axis would be taken first let's look for the static frictional force that would be equal to 0 0.3 times the normal force 5 square root of 3 so this is equal to 0.3 times 5 square root of 3 is equal to 2.598 newton so let's follow the direction of motion so the direction of motion if it fa the forces that is following the direction of motion will be considered as positive and those opposing will be considered as negative if the summation of forces along the axis of the direction of motion being considered is equal to zero then there is no motion but if it is not zero then there is motion so let's like look for summation of forces at the x prime axis that would be equal to the value x prime that is 5 opposing force frictional static force is equal to 2.598 take note that it, the weight component at the x prime axis is greater than the frictional force so it overcame overcome or exceeded the value of the frictional static force so there is motion so this would be equal to so 5 minus 2.590 is equal to 2.402 so that is not equal to 0 so there is motion Take note that this is not the force that would act on the system that would cause the acceleration, but this is just uh, this was just solved to determine whether there is motion or not. So what if we are the summation the frictional static force coefficient equal to 0.10? Let's solve for the kinetic frictional force acting on the system. This would be 0 0.10 times. The normal force is equal to 5 square root of 3. So 0.10 times 5 square root of 3 is equal to 0 0.866 Newton. So for this one, summation of forces at the x prime direction is equal to 5 minus the opposing force kinetic friction when there is motion is equal to 0 0.866 newton this would be equal to 5 minus 0.866 is 4.134 newton this is the force that you are going to use in the kinematic or kinetic formula equal f is equal to m times a that is the force that would cause the object to slide or the object to have its acceleration